Hey guys and welcome to another Cubase tips tutorial video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the beat designer inside of Cubase which is essentially a step sequencer for programming percussion and um, so it's a different way of you know creating your drum tracks opposed to using the more traditional methods of using the, the either the piano roll for scoring in the notes or the drum editor as well. Now Obviously with the drum editor, um, you have GM maps, which you can either create or download and, and use inside of Cubase. And basically what these do is they lay out all of the hits for the particular product in, a, you know, in the correct way so you can see what you're using. Whereas if I just loaded up a GM, a normal GM map here, it'd look like this. Um, but the naming might not necessarily coincide with what the actual sound is doing like that for example high tom it triggers a symbol and um, because this is a standard gm map so when you're using the drum editor it's always a, either a good idea to download a gm map which is specific to your product or create your own now creating your own is a little bit tedious if i open up the um, midi tab here and go to drum map setup you can create your own drum maps it's a lot like expression maps um, you just click new map and then you need to figure out how the actual drums are mapped um, to the keyboard find the note values which have sp specific samples on so c1's got the kick on so obviously i put kick on the c1 and then that when you've created your drum map and laid it out in here by dragging and dropping things around it'll look a little bit more like this one like i'm working on and then you can you know start working on your drums straight away but it's just tedious setting it up that's the only drawback um, but why I'm mentioning this and why it's important is because when you use the beat designer, depending on what drum map you've got loaded on will actually determine what you can see um, in the main window. So to open up the beat designer is really easy. You go, you select your track, you go over to MIDI inserts, click an empty uh, rack and then just click on beat designer and it will load up and it will look like um, this but without all these notes I've programmed in for this beat. Well, going back to what I just said about the um, the mapping, having the right uh, drum map loaded up will actually determine what's listed here and what you can choose from and, you know, how it's assigned correctly. So it's, it's important to remember that. But the beat designer itself is actually really cool. Uh, I quite like using this for creating drum parts simply because it's just a lot easier to use uh, than using the piano roll or the drum editor. Um, and the other bonus it has is the simplicity of use when it comes to actually adding a more human feel to things. You can use the quantizer if you like using the other two methods, but in the beat designer it's actually implemented a lot better and it's a lot easier to use. Um, so you've got two different forms of quantization here which you can uh, choose from or swing settings shall we say. So you've got set in one and set in two. Set in two is more aggressive um, than sounding than set in one. But the cool thing is, is you can switch between these settings for individual parts of your kit. So I could use set in two on uh, you know, the kick, I could use set in one on the snare, a set in two on the hi-hats. And then you've got individual sliders to control how much swing is applied to um, that particular part of the kit. So it's a lot easier than just using quantizing and trying finding that sweet spot by adding in the percentage values. Uh, you can literally just drag the bar over and it will start doing its thing. And then over here at the bottom you've got a global control for setting one and setting two of the swing. So anything that's set to setting one uh, you can use this to adjust the overall swing between all of them and the same applies if you know you've got things set on setting two. So, um, so what I'm going to do is set all these to swing one and then play the beat okay so at the moment nothing's happening because none of the values have been changed but I can globally increase the swing for that particular setting by using this down here or what I can do is do it for an individual part so let's do it on the hi-hat Okay, so you get the idea. Now if I turn on, oh, 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 <laughs> phone's going off. Now if I turn on version two, this is already gonna have some applied to it because it's already on. OK, 
Okay, so it's swinging away there, it's swinging away. Now, one thing I actually want to quickly show you guys here is you can actually add more lanes. Uh, over on the right here, you've got the plus and minus, so you can remove something, uh, or you can just keep clicking plus, and it will keep adding in uh, the various things in the chronological order of what this is laid out as. So you've got loads of control over what you can see and what you can use. I'm just going to back off on these a little bit. And what I'm going to show you guys now is to do with flams. Now flams, um, if you don't know what a flam is, let's say a good example of a flam, um, everyone knows Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana and that opening sequence with Dave Grohl where he smacks the snare, he's actually doing a flam, it's a double hit, but the hits are so close together it just sounds like one hit and it makes things sound bigger, that's a flam, so it's like instead of it just being a bum, it's like a... You know, one of them's offset to make it sound bitter, bigger instead of a single hit. And programming a flam in, the normal way you do it is that you you, you um, draw in a hit on the snare and then you draw another hit on a, uh, another channel which has the same sample on and then you offset them slightly to get the flam. Uh, and depending on how you offset them gives you a different sound. Whereas in this, it's a lot easier. So I've got a little beat loaded up. It's a bit, it's a bit busy, <laughs> but I just, I, I've done it this way just to show you guys. So obviously you've got the individual hits. To insert them is easy. You just click on it and you can draw a hit in. Um, but if you click and hold and drag up, you can increase the velocity or decrease the velocity. So you get your hoff, uh, hoff. The hassle hoff, you got hard and soft hits. Um, but when you hover the mouse over, you get these three little dots come up, uh, which are flams. So if I did a good example, going off what I said, which smells like teen spirit. So, uh, okay. So let's just uh, make this sound a little bit cooler. Uh, so the first hit I want is a normal hit. I'm going to do the second hit as a flam. And the third one is a normal hit, and then the fourth one as a flam as well, just to give you guys an idea. So, oh, what I need to do is actually reset this because I've been messing with it. Okay, there we go. So you can hear that double hit, um, and this is this is um, controllable as well. So down here you can actually control the offset between the notes or when the flam comes in, if it's early or if it's tighter to the initial hit or looser. Um, you can do that here by adjusting the slider. So if I turn all of these into flams, get rid of the kicks. Okay, and you can also adjust the, the level of the flam. You know, so you've got that control over it, and then you've got different flams as well. You've got a, a second type of flam, which is more of like a rolling, in, a roll into a flam. And again, you can control the volume of each of those hits and the position. And then obviously you've got your third flam, which is again a bit more of a roll again. And it's really cool having that feature built in because it just saves time trying to make flams. And you've got really good control over it and you can just quickly dial it in on any part of the kit that you want to use a sort of flam hit on. It's mainly going to be toms and snares really, but it, it sounds cool if you get experimental with it. Uh, so over here as well on the left, obviously depending on what your drum map is, you can, I think I've already said this already, but I'm going to say it again, you can select the different hits and you can mute and solo. But what's really quite handy with the beat designer is you've got you can create, you know, you've got a blank canvas, depending on what these keys are you use here. You can create different beats, copy beats over. So let's uh, just create something really random here. So I can go to the drop down, copy the pattern, and then paste it to the next section and add some variations in. And, and, and you can keep going and create your beats for the track. 
which is really handy. And you can also do things like uh, reverse the patterns, like so if you wanted to hear what the, the particular beat sounded like if it was reversed and give you some more interesting variations. You can actually increase, you know, how many bars you want. Uh, if you want it in sixteenths, uh, quarter notes, triplets, or anything like that, you can also do that as well. But what's cool is it also gives you the option to save uh, a particular beat as well. So if I, you know, if I wanted this as my beat, you can do that. And then uh, if we, I don't know, uh, created a completely different beat, I could then recall the other one. And there you go. So it's a, it's a cool way to save MIDI beats and save you reprogramming things out. Um, you can do it that way as well. Now, jump and now, I, I haven't really got an idea what these do. I've never really used them. Um, it's probably going to be something I have to look into. I should know really if I'm doing one of these videos to show you guys. Um, but there you go. So it's just a quick look really at the step sequencer inside of Cubase. What you can do if you want to, obviously you want to know how you transfer the beats over to the main window, you just click on the key pattern that you've already got and drag and drop it in and it will do it for you like so. And so again I want this one on so I'll just drag that in and there you go, it automatically drags in the beats for you. It's also got some predefined beats loaded uh, into it as well as you probably saw when I went to load up my preset. If I get rid of this, you've got loads of different predefined beats you can load up. Let's see what these sound like across this map in. <laughs> so I'm pretty damn awful because it's not mapped out. Um, but there you go. So that is the beat designer inside of Cubase. Um, as I say, the integration of it could be a lot better with Cubase, um, but hopefully that will be something in the future that what they will pay more attention to and do. So hopefully you found this video useful. Um, if you haven't, give it a thumbs down. If you have, give it a thumbs up. If any comments or questions, obviously leave them in the description description in the comments box below. If you haven't already, um, be sure to hit the bell icon to keep up to date with more releases and new videos and subscribe to the channel. Thank you all for watching. I will see you again very shortly with another video. Um, I know you guys, some of you guys have been requesting some more mix videos, so that's something um, you know, I'm going to start doing more of as well. Um, but in fact, actually, it'd be good if you guys leave a comment in below just saying what kind of videos you would like to see more of. I know you, you're really into these Cubase videos and you like seeing uh, tutorials with Cubase, but I'd like to hear more from you guys uh, what you'd like to see more of. So leave your, leave your suggestions in the box below. Thank you for watching everyone and I will see you next time.